What is a plan? Ooh, how abstract and interesting. So I wanted to go through some of these guys with you, and then we'll uh, take a look at these different puzzles. And so um, as we, you know, as we go through these right here, we'll just kind of have some some bouts of, of like quiet or like maybe even silence or, you know, I'll just comment on your guys' comments and um, we'll just see kind of how far we get. Probably looking to spend about two to five minutes, um, uh, you know, on each one. Is this the Jeremy Sillman book? Yes, indeed it is. So these are all um, puzzles that are taken right from the, uh, the book. And so... Uh, I've been teaching this class for, for quite a while, and I, I really in, enjoy it. And one of the things I, I like about it is that it kind of stretches me uh, in my, my thinking and, like, you know, makes me – it puts the pressure on me to get more organized with it. And I think uh, a, a shining example of that is is these Lee Chess studies. I, I didn't used to do this before this class, but I found that they're really helpful, you know, for coming prepared and uh, keeping you guys um, engaged and uh, not having any, um, you know, time – uh, in between when we're not doing something. So I, I, I come prepared. I got some good ones to show you guys. Would you like to um, get into them right away? Do I have any challengers? I'll play like a, a bowler game if someone wants, like a one-minute game. Um, or we can go right into these questions. Uh, which would you prefer, option A or B? <laughs> to do option A, I'd need a challenger. Anyone want to play me one minute? Or you guys want to go right into these? Okay, I got one challenger. All right, send me a challenge here uh, on uh, on Lee Chess. Or I guess I can make one, right? All right, so uh, play with a friend, and then we'll do uh, this year. So real time, one minute. All right. So then uh, rated definitely. Here's the link, and then we'll do a first come first serve. I guess on this one. We'll play one game, and then we're going to do some essay questions. All right, here we go. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. You you look like you're... Oh, okay, I'm playing against a master now. All right, we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. Good luck. Okay, we got a Nimzo. Queen's Indian. Uh, there's a name for this variation. I forget what it is. With uh, A3. Okay, d5, blocking that diagonal, sweet, haha. <laughs> Bishop's gonna have no life there anymore, more or less. We're gonna go e3, bring out this bishop. Got a pretty level game here. And then maybe knight e5, bring in the rook. I don't know, takes, takes. Probably good news for me, if you have a doubled pawn, I mean an isolated pawn here. Let's see what we can do. Get out of harm's way. That seems ideal. And then, woohoo, going to win this pawn, I think, hopefully. Oh, that was a free rook, but don't but don't tell him that. Oh, he noticed it. Darn. <laughs> uh, so then if I take this way, it takes like this. It doesn't quite work just yet. Do I double the rooks or something? Maybe I can go here and here. Oh, oh he's going for my pawn. Hey, what did I ever do to you? What is this about? Where's this coming from? Okay, I'll push this. No, he's attacking the rook too. Ah, oh, jeez. 10 seconds. This is going well. This is going well. I think I got this. <laughs> and by that I mean I need to start doing a lot of pre moves to have any remote chance at all. Oops, oops. Oh, I've been got. I've been got. All right, good game. Good game. You got me. I'm no good at one minute. I'm no good at one minute. Let's see your stats. I bet, you, I bet the only time control you're good at is one minute. Nope, I stand corrected. Okay, all right, all right. We're going to set some rules, I think, on who can challenge me uh, for future bullet games. No, just kidding. You played well. Good game. <laughs> um, uh, let's, let's go ahead and, and take a look at these. All right, first question right off the bat is, what is an imbalance? What do you guys think? Again, in case you missed it, the agenda is we're going to do this uh, these essay prompts, uh, and then we got some middle game stuff or some opening puzzles. We're going to do this basically until you guys get bored of it or something. <laughs> Fun commentary. Yay! <laughs> Good, I'm glad. What is an imbalance? When material or position is better for one side. Okay, so let's see here. One example is 
material. Um, let's see here. Uh, asymmetry. Mm -hmm. uh, such as various, various positional differences. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I'm going to jump to the next one here too. So king safety would be one material. And this is a really good warm up for these puzzles too. Space. Yep. There we go. Yep. Uh, uh, so pawn, pawn advantage would be space, uh, and then pawn structure, um, and then we got, yep, that's another one, knight's enclosed position, yeah, um, so like superior minor piece, uh, piece activity, I wonder if that's, if that's one of them on, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it how, how, how he has it on here, you guys are doing well with these, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll list them in the order he's got them, and then we'll, you can fill in the gaps here. So, superior minor piece, the first one he lists. Um, and then we have pawn structure. And then we have space. And space, again, is like, it has to do with pawns. It's kind of like the fence to your house, essentially. Um, so then space, and then material. We have that one. And then I don't know if he put in king safety, but that's that's definitely uh, a gap in his uh, like system. Like king safety belongs on there. But what what are the other ones here? It has to do with what um uh when he said before bishop pair. That's like super, superior minor piece. Control of key squares. Good good. Um, so that would be this one here. Um, so we have uh, control of a key file or square. And then activity of pieces, um, he, he calls it a lead in development. We're missing anything, that's all of them. Oh, initiative, another one. All right, so these are the different uh, types of imbalances in there. So let's let's see how he describes these. I mean, based on the examples, you can kind of infer your own uh, definition of it, I suppose. But uh, let's see here. He, he just says, any difference in the two respective positions? Let's try to create uh, as many balances as possible, and if, if uh, you think you can ultimately make them uh, serve your cause. Don't allow an imbalance to be created if you think it will be to your opponent's advantage. All right. How about this one? How about this one, huh? What is the plan? Ooh. <laughs> Curious to see what you guys are going to say about this. Where do you even start? Okay, this is this is one thing I'll say. is like, basically, it's uh, a, a clump. This is how I think about it. It's a clump of, like, uh, ideas and moves that take place within about five moves. That's how I think of a plan. So I'll go first. What, what do you guys think? A way to find an imbalance. Let's see. Okay. Um, a way to find... Well, I'll just write that down. All right. Uh, imbalance. What else we got? Okay. A goal to win in a specific way. We're not looking for an exact definition. I'll, I'll, I'll type out what he, he gives but much more stimulating and, and, and appropriate, I think, for this situation is just give your own definition of what, what makes sense to you. What is a plan? But less amount of moves. So kind of kind of this, but but not necessarily five moves. Steps to improve the position, but not necessarily concrete. What else we got? Well, go, 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 go. And if you haven't already, do sign up for that, that tournament, by the way. Just another reminder. 
Okay, here's the answer he gives. Um, he says, um, making positive use of the existing characteristics of a position. See what I mean? We weren't we weren't looking for an exact answer. Uh, we're just looking to kind of get your guys' take on it. So making positive use of the existing characteristics of a position. All right. I think we'll go ahead and, uh, and, and pause the discussion of these essay questions and get to the good stuff. Let's look at some, some puzzles. Do you guys want to start with the uh, middle game or opening puzzles? Here's an example of a uh, middle game puzzle. And then this was one of the ones I had for uh, opening. One vote for opening. What else we got? Two votes for opening. Three votes. We'll consider that unanimous then. All right. So uh, number 23 here. Um, we got uh, this one here. So let's let's read the prompt here. He says that uh, after these moves have been played. Let's see here. Did I get all the moves played? Yes. All right. So after e4, e5, f4, king's gambit, we see these moves here played. Uh, a6, dubious move. D4, kapow, taking over the center. Takes, takes. Bishop A7. Uh, white is 1700 and black is 1900. Uh, both sides should instantly see the strategy they're going to use to pursue uh, and, and develop accordingly. What is white's correct strategy? What is black's? I hope I haven't done this one in this class before. If I have, it's only this one and the next one. If I have and you can remember it, definitely say so and give the answer. But otherwise, let me know what you think. What's the what are the correct sides? What are the correct plans for both sides? <laughs> yeah, I think I think I think takes is, is best, right? Earlier on. Push e5 at some point, okay. Try to target f7, castle queen side. Wild man. We have no pawns over here. What do you what do you what do you, what, do you, what do you mean castle queen side? Maybe uh, you could do that, I suppose. I like how you have a uh, certain square in mind, like f seven. I don't know if you can really get that much going for it. What is control of the center? Needs to develop fastest would be like here and then there. Mm -hmm. um, okay, good. So I'm going to jump in and kind of give the answer. Yep. So you guys are getting closer now. Um, uh, it's basically the difference between occupying the center and attacking the center, right? White White has the center, and so he's going to be protecting it with moves like um, knight to c3. Did I put these ones in here already? Didn't think so. Uh, knight c3, and he's going to be going here, as mentioned by by someone earlier. Uh, and then we're just going to be protecting it. And then it's Black's responsibility to um, attack it. And then the game is going to shift into Black's favor here, and we're going to see just an example of how Black's going to be attacking this center. Okay, so Black's going to go here, knight to f6, and then here, and rook e8. All right, let's see how things shake out. All right, after right here, knight to f6, bishop e3, castles, bishop d3. I would prefer white here. I would think white's doing pretty well. Maybe he messed it up later. What's the move now for black? It's a tactical shot. Knight c6 is, you know, kind of consistent with the theme, you know, applying some pressure right here. Knight takes e4. Um, would that work? If you did this, and then here, you're thinking like f5 now or something? Oh, you know what? Check. Then king over. If I don't do check, I'm not sure if this is what you're referring to or not, but 
uh, if, if I just go back like this, then here takes, right? So you're kind of in the ballpark, but I think I have, I have a chance to evade that with, with that check. Take with the rook. Nah, don't want to take with the rook. No one's got it yet. In this discussion of strategy and puzzles, uh, there's a lot of answers that are a bit abstract and ambiguous and open to interpretation. This one is uh, pretty concrete. There's one specific move that's better than all the rest. And it's not going to be queen e7. Bishop f5. Yep. Kapow. All right, so now if takes, then you get this, uh, this bishop, right? Um, forces white to push the e-pawn, which is, uh, the way it implies it, I guess it's like, yeah, that, that kind of is bad news, right, for white. It, it, someone mentioned this earlier about this, this e-pawn push. I didn't think about it, but if, once you push it, then you kind of are, um, committing to a certain weakness, right? And that weakness would come in the form of d5, for example. Now you're no longer controlling right here. Let's see how it, how it develops. All right. Um, if instead black were to go with, uh, with uh, knight takes e4, there was also another way to uh, reply against that he mentions. Like here, uh, here takes and then d5. Did someone say that? Someone said d5 at some point. Maybe maybe meant it right away. Uh, if this right away, now knight to g5. Kapow. And then if here, kapow. So that, that, that way wouldn't work. But bishop f5 is really, really strong. Okay, let's see what happens next. After this, then they're going to go e5, here takes on d3, queen takes, knight c6, queen d2, knight b4, castles, and then uh, now we're going to go with this one, knight f to d5, and black has an excellent position. Okie dokie, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Any questions about this one? Any comments, things stood out to you? Lingering, burning questions, anything like that? Moving on to puzzle number two. Here we go. So uh, now we're going to go with uh, pawn c4, and then uh, it goes like this, g6, here, here, this move, g7, we come here, pawn d6, pawn d5, and um, after pawn to c5, would uh, white do better to develop the g1 knight by going to f3 or h3? What do you think? Oh, why didn't white take on f6? Good question. Good question. I, I saw that at the corner of my eye. I wasn't going to say it unless someone pointed it out. So I'm pretty sure it has something to do with this fork, right? Good question. Just you're paying attention. Yep. Because um, if they do it right now, I think you could just go here. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. That was a good question. I was going to wait to see if someone brought it up. See, because it did look like the knight was on pre, right? All right. Let's keep it going. All right, white to move right here. Um, which way do you go? F3 or H3? <laughs> Pretty much, right? It would be kind of a lame puzzle if it was like, oh, the knights do better in the center, so that's that's the end of this one. But, I mean, it, it kind of has to be here, right? So why why is he saying that one? Yep. I would imagine this is the case, yeah. <laughs> so I guess I'll just read the answer here. Exactly. I mean, in general, uh, knights are better towards the center, right? So why, why is that the case? Why, why do you normally want to go this way and not this way? Yep, attack more uh, squares towards the center, yeah. So if you imagine there's a knight right here in the corner, it would actually only control two squares. That's the least possible to control. Whereas when it's in the center, then it has kind of like a stop sign like type of deal, right? Where it goes like this, and then here. I, I, I mapped it out once actually, like comparing the, the bishop and the uh, the knight. The the bishop actually does the best in the, in the center as well. And when it goes out to like here, I think it goes down to like eight squares total that it, that it controls. But just in general, if you're closer to the center, you're gonna occupy more, more squares. So to go out to this way and control less squares, there has to be some sort of big upside to it. And I think it's gonna have to do with what, what you said there. At the position the moment is locked, so the knight is um, actually blocked from going to F3. Blocked out from going to F3. What, what say you, what, what is this? What do, what do you mean? What do you mean? It, like you mean it can't, it can't go much further? 
That that must be what what you mean, yeah. Because you don't really have a follow up space necessarily. You can go to G five, and I'm sure knight f three is fine, but I I bet you knight h three is just a little bit better. Okay, that's what he says. Uh, let's see what he says. Um, so now the knight is heading to uh, to uh, f four, where then it not only uh, eyes the move uh, e six, but could also leap into d five. Um, in the case of d x e five, after doing like on passant, or if this guy comes up this way. Um, Okay, that's going to do it for this one. So just uh, want to double check your, your development. You know, if you're going to bring a knight out, uh, and if you weren't aware, you know, yeah, you're gonna, your, your knight's going to do more if it's towards the center. But for those of you who were aware of that, you know, double check it and go, well, in this case, I don't know, maybe this is an exception. Maybe I've got a better pathway if I go here. Okay, here we go. Third puzzle. Um, so it's a Kirokan. Kirokan. Let's see what happens here. After e4, d, uh, d4, d5. Then uh, takes, takes. Then he says, commonly seen moves at the amateur level are the moves knight to c3, pawn c4, and bishop to d3. Which one of these is simply incorrect? Ooh, I guess. What is Steinitz's rule on how to beat knights? Ooh, I don't know. Open the board. Which one of those three is incorrect? I'll withhold a, an answer just yet and see what else we get. Oh, I had it in the dock. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Let me let me let me take a look. Which one of these is wrong? Take away all their advanced support points. C4 could be bad because it creates... Uh, does it answer your question, by the way? Sai? Take away all their advanced support points. C4 could be bad because it creates an isolated potential... Uh, a potential isolated pawn. Mm -hmm. Yep, so uh, that's, that's a good point, right? Is that you can end with this isolated queen pawn, which could give you some, some grief later. Like in my, my bullet game earlier when I tried to attack that isolated queen pawn. I'm pretty sure I had a nice advantage there at one point, by the way. But uh, that's definitely a good consideration. It's good you know about that term and everything. But no, actually, um, uh, uh, you, you had the answer earlier. Yeah, this, this answer was, was correct. Nice C3 because you block the C pawn, actually. Um, so an IQP is good or bad depending on the position. Yep, yep. Definitely, definitely true. So uh, let's see how he puts it here. So that was for this one. Um, so the uh, the second cho choice, uh, pawn to c4, is known as the uh, Panoff uh, Bodvinnik attack. And so it's one of the best lines against the Karakhan because it puts pressure on black center by attacking d5. Um, and then bishop to d3 is another line f uh, favored by amateurs. Well, you guys already got the gist. Yeah, you, you don't want to go here because you block in the pawn. That is going to be the answer to this one. Moving on to puzzle number four. Let's see what we got here. Uh, e4, c5, c3, d5, d3. Why is d3 considered a poor move? I think I've seen that before if you do the Karo Khan. So I wonder if it's different. Yep, good point, good point. I think that may be the answer. Fingers crossed it's deeper than that. So one suggested answer, this is definitely an important one to consider, is if takes, takes, you could go here, 
Find the King Can't Castle. Tempo for black. It blocks white's bishop. Okay. There's Kara compositions with knight f3 and d3 instead of d4. Mm -hmm. uh, missed out on, on this one or something. Oh, oh, you're saying, okay, that's interesting. You're saying if here, then here check. Um, that's interesting. I don't know. But wait, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't they go like this though? And then after you take maybe here. Interesting, plausible. There's a line in the, uh, what is it, like the Tarash that's kind of like that. Is that where you got that from? Or did you just think of that now? That's similar to the Tarash. Um, so then another vote for, uh, for stopping the, the castling. Lost tempo. Um, okay, so he says actually that this is, this is not correct that you can do this move. Um, I think, I think it, it has more to do with uh, just uh, losing a tempo. So the reason d3 isn't played is that black can just develop normally with knight c6. How about that? So he's saying that, in fact, um, this, necessarily, this isn't necessarily that good for, uh, for white. I mean, for black. Sure, the king can't castle, but, you know, the king is going to have a, a square you can just kind of tuck right into here on, uh, on like, c2. And then it's, it's pretty much looking fine right there. And we don't really have a way to exploit it without the queens being on the board. So... It was well, it was a little deeper than that, which I was I was happy to see. Uh, just nice e six. You just kind of wasted tempo uh, instead. Let's look at some stats on this too. Let's see what they have here. Uh, oh, I guess I turned off the thing. Let me turn it back on. Hold on. Now I have to know. I must know. Okay, open explorer only me save. Um, here we go. Yes, I got my button back. All right. So in this position right here. Uh, wow, look at that. 66 uh, versus 11,000. So this is super, super uh, uncommon here for uh, for white. It looks like everyone's taking this way. All right, good to know, good to know. We're on now to puzzle number, uh, was it five or six? I think it's five. All right, here we go. This one's gonna be in the uh, the Queen's Indian defense. This is uh, in the, the bullet game actually earlier too. So what is the logic? behind this move, pawn to b6. E4, yep. E4 is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Not so much C5. Um, we're not really going to push here necessarily, but E4 is definitely going to be a key factor right here. So he's going to be aiming more firepower at that square on uh, on E4. Uh, Knight F3, by the way, he adds, uh, didn't do anything to increase his control over the important uh, E4 square. In fact, they actually blocked the possibility of pawn to F3. Um... If, if white plays pawn f3, what's the move here for black? d5, yep, d5, kapow. Again, fighting for right here, you know? So theme is opening puzzles, you know? And, and of course, as you guys know, in the opening, you want to control the center, develop your pieces, and, and castle your king. So just seeing some more fine-tuning of, uh, you know, kind of our understanding with, with those different concepts. So, yep, that indeed is going to be the uh, the plan. You just go like this, and then you control here. Uh, to add on top of that, what is the point of, of this move? Pawn a3. What's the name for this? Petrosian. Petrosian. That's, that's the one I couldn't remember. Petrosian variation. Yep, it blocks bishop to b4, which again fights for e4. This is a big battle happening for this square as it turns out, which, again, kind of goes back to the thing we mentioned a second ago, right? Control of a key file or square. That's why we did this at the start. Okay, that's going to be it for uh, for this one. Okay, let's see here. Do I have this next one loaded up? Puzzle number 28? Let's see. Let's see here. Puzzle number 28. Yes, I believe I do. Okay, here we go. And then this one's uh, got a, 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 a collie system. 
let's take a look. So after uh, the following moves, here, here, we go like this, pawn c5, c3, uh, knight to c6, bishop d3, bishop e7, and then castles, we reach a uh, common position in the ever popular on the amateur level, call the opening. Not so popular anymore. Most players uh, nowadays do the uh, the London, but this is uh, this is the old school version of London, I suppose, right? Creates a little pyramid, but leaves this guy back. Um, and then let's see. At this point, two moves that uh, might be considered are C4 and CXD4. Um, what do you think of those two possibilities? I'm going to withhold my answer just yet. All right. So actually, um, yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, both are bad, uh, essentially. Um, so uh, I should have waited longer. C, uh, CXD4, yeah, I would say this is probably better than, than going right here. Uh, and then good, also considering the center too, right? Like if you go C4, then uh, then E4 could come in later since you don't have the, the pressure anymore uh, on this spot. But um, he says that, yeah, essentially this move and this move get played a lot at the amateur level, but much better would be to just simply castle. Um, they're just not a big upside of, of doing either of those moves at this time. Okay, um... He's got some more to, to say about it. I sort of paraphrased this to sort of, you know, just for the sake of momentum. Let me let me kind of scan here. Let's see. So he does say that uh, white white is ready to make this move pawn to uh, to e4 at any point, um, and so we just want to keep this pressure here on on d4. Um, and let's see here. Also dubious is is cx d4 because uh, then white is the one who gains after e takes d4. Suddenly white c1 bishop is free. Uh, to make use of the c1 to h6 diagonal. Um, and then also the f1 rook has a uh, 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 the, the file that's like now half open to uh, occupy as well. Your moves are supposed to do uh, nice things for your side. Don't make moves that give your opponent all sorts of positive things he didn't previously possess. All right, moving on here now to puzzle number 29. Unless you guys want to do, you want to do a, uh, a middle game one just to kind of throw it in there. By the way, the attendance so far for the tournament is looking stellar. Just just crushing it, you guys. Crushing it. We got three sign-ups, so <laughs> can't ask for more than that, right? But you can. Actually, you can't ask for more than that. Come on, guys. <laughs> it's not that big of a commitment. Just play three games. But implement what some of what you learned. If the time control is perfect for it, too, because there's enough time where you can make these plans. All right, you guys have other obligations, I guess, though. Um... <laughs> Um, what do you say? Uh, C takes D4 looks better. C4 may have a consequence of, uh, you said that already. What, what's the plan then? The plan is to keep, uh, 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 the center, uh, undetermined and then push on the queen side. Yes. Great question. And I do think that is in fact, uh, the, the intention here for black. Great follow-up, uh, question there. Yeah. You're just going to, you're just going to go this way and then, uh, push on, on the queen side. Um, that's a great question. Hold on. Let, let's, let's see an example game. Let's see how that might uh, uh, pan out. Let's look at one where black wins and see if we can just flip through it really fast. All right, so this is uh, uh, Kramnik against uh, uh, MVL. This, by the way, is a great way to, to learn new openings um, is to just like look at a master game and kind of gain some uh, understanding of the ideas and whatnot. Okay, let's see what happened here. So in this battle, he's gonna, uh, we're going to see this, this Pillsbury Knight come in on, on E5. And then he's going to push for the center with f5. That's interesting. So this, in this case, not going for the queen side. Takes, takes. And then we get a knight outpost right here. Still leaving this on the table, not making either one of these moves. Shifting to the king side. How about that? So you can still play either way. It's flexible. So to answer your question, it's, uh, it, yeah, it kind of is undetermined as of yet, right? Uh, quickly go through the rest of it. And the engine's also saying this is still a, a balanced position. Takes, takes. Here, here. You go back. Close, close battle. 
uh, your takes. White's now got the advantage for a second. And like I said, this is a great way to learn openings, and, and you can kind of study what happens in the middle game at a higher level play and how, how do they win. And that's a common theme is that it's close all the way through for the uh, the end game. And then it's not until the final few moves that they, they have a breakthrough. Oh, blunder here. Okay, let's see here. So there takes. And okay, I think now we're kind of far off from the opening. That, well, we're almost at the end. Here, here, and then he just pushes a pawn, I guess. And he wins this way. I like how you put it. Uh, leave, leave the uh, center and like th kind of the plan in general, uh, you know, undetermined. And so let's look at uh, the next one. Okay, uh, let's look at the middle game one. This one right here, I previewed uh, with another student actually, and it's uh, it's um, it's it's a good one. It's pretty interesting. I, I hadn't really seen this kind of idea my, myself in quite a while. Uh, it, it is kind of sketchy, and it's like, does that work really? And then you see the rest of the game, and you go, oh, okay, yeah, actually, that does kind of have some bite to it. So check this one out. Let me let me get caught up on the page number here. 188. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here. Um, all right. So this is there's there's two different games he's going to compare actually. So he goes with this one. And, and with this one. And uh, he, he gives the following move. So we'll pause for a little bit longer on this one and give it more of a discussion because I bet you no one's going to get this one. Because um, I know how to ask the question because I've already, I've already done this, this one with no student. Okay, here we go. Um, so in this game here, it's uh, Bobby Fischer in 1970. He goes King H1. So check this out. Here, here, Rook G1. He's going to push the, uh, the G pawn. Okay, so he, ma he marches this guy on up this way. Odd looking moves to be sure. But in our next game, something similar seems to occur uh, over 100 years earlier. This one's played by P uh, Paul Morphy. And so he's going to go with here, 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 and like this. Okay. Um, what is the point of the plans chosen by both great players? Um, yeah. What's, what's, the, what's the point of the plan? What are they up to? And if you want to take a closer look... You could even look at the study itself, so you can kind of flip back between the two. Both of them have this similarity of uh, shuffling the rook over and then pushing the G pawn. What is the point of that? Oh, it is? Oh, my bad. Yeah, it's it's pretty tough to answer this one unless you can like look at this this study. I mean, you mean you you can you can take a gander at it, or if you want to just hear what other people say, you can just you can just uh, watch, I guess. What is the point of that plan? Yep, that's part of it, for sure. Mm -hmm. Open the G file for the attack, yep. This is, um, the, yeah, this is like 50% of it. This is like another really good chunk of it. And then this one here, like the F-pawn would be a hook, right? But in... In this example, is there's another really neat, interesting benefit to it that, that surprised me. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Not necessarily to go after e5, but but good guess. Like if we push this, then e5 is not going to be as supported. It's possible to guess it, but it's pretty tough. Um, yeah, I mean that that comes up in like a rook lift, right? Maybe going this way, and on that same note, right? Like bringing this other rook, so we're gonna do like a, a double rook kind of action, right? In both of these cases.
Center is closed is another factor. Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, the bulk of the answer is uh, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it now is kind of what uh, uh, Sadesh said. You you basically just kind of are opening up the G file for an attack. Um, it takes on a different shape in, in the different games. So in this one, as, as White, uh, uh, Bob Fisher is going to kind of do it gradually, where he waits for quite a while. He, he builds up the attack um, quite quite a bit. But here's the other kicker. This is what I was, I was looking for. This is the answer I was looking for. White has created an artificial support, uh, su su uh, support point on E4. Um, in, this, in this contest, Fisher managed to grab the initiative on both sides of the board as well. So, what does he mean by that? Why, why is this an artificial support point? Well, because if they kick away this, uh, this outpost, right? Someone earlier asked about, like, how do you keep uh, knights at bay or whatever it was? You, you kick them away from their outpost? Well, Bobby Fisher is sort of countering Steinus' rule of, uh, you know, kicking away the, the knights. Because if you do this, that's going to fall right into uh, White's clutches. Okay, so the pacing of the uh, the Fisher game is really uh, like gradual, and I would say more skillful and, and like interesting because it it just really kind of hits you all of a sudden. Uh, whereas th this game is sort of just a knock him over the head sort of an attack, which is exciting. But this one impresses me more. W watch how he kind of builds up this this whole attack here. I guess we see this move rook g three as mentioned earlier, and then he's going to go this way. We bring in this rook knight b six knight to c five, kind of uh, putting some pressure uh, this away. And then we're going to go knight to h4. And do we want to trade away this knight? Of course not. This knight's kind of ho-hum. This knight on e4 was kind of the whole point of our plan. That's kind of why we didn't, uh, you know, want to allow for this this whole f5 stuff. So this this knight is uh, is like gold. We're not going to trade it away for, you know, this this hunk of metal over here. This, this knight's definitely more valuable. Okay. After this, knight to um, f8. And then uh, we're going to go knight to f5. Kapow. And the attack has been really kicked off now for sure. Uh, uh, bishop here to e6, and then it's still pretty gradual. He's still going to make a couple of building moves here. Um, knight to c5, and then knight e7 here. We're going to take out the bishop, and then he goes uh, g5 like this, loosening up that diagonal, and then uh, it's pretty much just, just game over. There's just, there's just no contest now. Uh, okay, and then that kind of goes to what uh, Andre was saying. So eventually, yes, actually E5 did get uh, targeted. So I'm sorry, I was wrong about that. Yeah, that, that, that did become a factor. Good answer there as well. Um, after knight to F5, then we go like this, and then B6, and then after here, uh, black resigns a little bit later. Cool. So he, uh, he eventually did this whole attack. Now watch how fast it happens in the Paul Morphy game. It's a bit different. And this uh, tournament of, of three, whew, it's going to be quite a battle. It's going to start in just two minutes. So <laughs> I'm playing the tournament. Like, lesson's over once the tournament starts. You guys, come on. <laughs> come on, just play a couple of games. You can do it. Right. I'll put the link in the chat one more time in case you guys change your mind. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to play. I'll play a little bit. I got to I got to uh, call it right here soon. But okay, let's see how this how this one goes. Uh all right. He goes knight here to d3. <laughs> you guys have probably had a long day. Probably had a long day. I get it. I get it. All right. We go like this and then knight takes here on e5 and he doesn't really give a whole lot of commentary. But just again, sort of watch the pacing. It's just like all these moves are much much more aggressive. Already just uh sacrificing this uh this f7 pawn. And why is he doing that? We know this guy's coming over here. Uh, anything else? What's what's he up to? Not a super difficult question or anything, but why why did he decide it was worth giving up a pawn? What's what's he up to? Bishop e6. Yep. Yep. You go like this. Yep, and we're going to be attacking G2, yep. And also, here's another thing, our queen can come in too and deliver mate this way. So this is a very no-nonsense no kind of attack here. Queen takes on C7, we can say, you can have that pawn, you can have all the queen side pawns if you want. Kapow, rook takes G2. Um, would, would, it, would this work right here? Can you go like this? They can't take you. Would this also work? I think it might. Very Morphe like. Yep, definitely. I think this might also work. Uh, but maybe you could go here now. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, Queen takes e5. Check. 
Yeah, and then now, now this doesn't work out quite so well. So that's why uh, he went with this one. Rook takes g2, kapow, opening up some, uh, some files this away. And now after here, we see uh, this check. And then here, you got the choice. Do you go queen to h2 or do you go uh, rook to f8? Queen to h2 is indeed the answer. Uh, if you go if you go this way, they're going to slip away. So you got to kind of cut off that escape square.